This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You're watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. Right, so this is the kind of video that I know is going to spark a bit of a reaction because everybody's going to have an opinion on this one, which is, should professionals be allowed to enter the Olympic Games? Now, the reason that I'm doing this video in particular is because Mexico have asked Andy Ruiz Jr. to represent Mexico at next year's Olympic Games in Tokyo. Now, Andy Ruiz Jr. said that it would be an honor to do it, but of course it would be dependent on his contractual obligations. By that, what I'm guessing is he means that if he defeats Andy, um, Anthony Joshua on December the 7th in Saudi Arabia and retains the belts, then he's going to have some commitments to the IBF. He's going to have to fight Kubrat Pulev. And then after that, he's going to have to fight Alexander Usyk as a WBO mandatory. But if he was to lose to Anthony Joshua, which I believe he will lose to Anthony Joshua, then he has no obligations. He has no contractual commitments. So maybe from that point of view, he, he can then enter the Olympic Games. But would Mexico want him if he gets smoothed out by Anthony Joshua? So ultimately, we don't know. But the point in question is, should uh, professional fighters be allowed in the Olympic Games? Because I know it is a new rule that they are now allowed to enter some amateur tournaments, including the Olympic Games. Now, only a couple of weeks ago, um, 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 I've forgotten the, the lad's name. Is he from Azerbaijan or Bolivia or something? Um, um, I forget what, what the guy's name is. Either way, he, he's an undefeated um, fighter and he fought in there and he knocked out an amateur fighter cold. Put him out cold, which doesn't usually happen too much in the amateur system. Now, here's the thing. For anybody who says that, yes, professional fighters should be allowed to enter the Olympic Games because ultimately it is pitting country versus country as in the best fighters that say the United Kingdom has, the best fighters that America has, Mexico, Japan, etc, etc, all against each other. And when it comes to boxing, the best fighters are professional. So for example, should Vasyl Lomachenko be allowed to go back into the Olympic Games and try and win a third Olympic gold medal? You see? So I understand from that point of view, it is literally the best versus the best. Because unfortunately, in the professional, we don't always get that. It's always about money and blah, blah, blah. But as I said, from that point of view, I do get it. It is the best versus the best. But here's where I have a bit of an issue with it. So for those who say, yes, professional boxers should be allowed, let me ask you this question. Would you like it or would you be perfectly okay if, say, Tyson Fury fought somebody who has just turned professional and hasn't had a single fight yet? Would you like it if Dylan White did the same? Anthony Joshua did the same? Deontay Wilder did the same? Would you like that? Vasyl Lomachenko did the same. Errol Spence Jr., Terence Crawford, and so on and so on. Would you be happy with that? That somebody turning professional as their debut take on one of these guys? You wouldn't be happy with it, would you? Of course not. So if you're not happy with that, then why would you be happy with a professional entering the Olympic Games. Because essentially, that's what they're doing. They're taking on fighters who have very little to no experience, especially as a professional. Now, I understand professional boxing and Olympic style or amateur style uh, boxing is different. It's a different point system and etc. So I do understand that maybe a lot of professionals can't make the transition back into amateur. Likewise, a lot of amateurs who spend a long, long time in the amateurs can't really get out of the amateur style when they're fighting in professional. Some do, some take to it like a duck to water, like um, Vasyl Lomachenko, for example, Alexander Usyk, uh, Joe Joy so far, and etc., etc. So some do, but a lot of amateurs, they never really get known in the professional game because they just can't make the adjustment. They could be an exceptional amateur, but in the professional game, they just can't crack it. So maybe vice versa that way. But my point is, if you are four professionals entering the Olympic Games and taking on amateurs, because ultimately Olympic boxing, to try and get that Olympic gold or at least medal for the Olympics or represent your country as an amateur, that is the peak of any amateur, isn't it? That's the ultimate goal. And you're pretty much taking it away from them. Because what amateurs are going to win the tournaments if all professionals go, actually, you know what? I'm going to represent my country in the Olympic Games. So what is it exactly that the amateurs have been working for, for the last three, four years? You see, you, you're taking away an opportunity for them, are you not? I mean, in some ways, it, um, it would be good if loads of professionals did it. 
Because at least that way, if say for example, Dillian White um, decided to represent um, Great Britain or Jamaica, okay? And John Taylor Wilder did it as well. Wilder then can no longer avoid Dillian White. So in that way, we will get the fights that we want, but it'll be a different kind of fight, wouldn't it? Whereas in professional games, you keep on fighting and if you, you get a point win if you get to the round um, at the end of round number 12. If not, someone's getting knocked out. Okay, but with amateurs, it's totally different. The referee will stop the fight every three or four seconds. Okay, so you can't get too aggressive. So ultimately, would it really be, be a fight that we want to see? Probably not. Um, on the amateur stage but for me I don't believe that a professional fighter when they reach a certain point in their professional career should be allowed to enter the Olympic Games or or any amateur tournament I think once these guys have achieved something whether it be a a British title or a Commonwealth or a European at that point you're pretty much at the point of no return so if a fighter if a if a professional has only had like 10 fights in, then yeah, maybe fair enough. You know, have one more go. But for me, I think it's taken away a lot from the amateurs. You're taking away the opportunity to win a gold medal. Because when, once an amateur wins that pinnacle, the gold medal, they turn professional, they will get sponsorships, they will get money, they will get hype. And they're taking it away from them. For me, it will be an unfair advantage for a professional such as Andy Ruiz Jr. to go into the amateur system. But what happened if you went into the amateur system for the Olympic Games and get smoothed out by an amateur? How bad would that look on Andy Ruiz Jr. or any professional? Anyway, that's what's going on. You drop your thoughts about it below in the comment section. Click the thumbs up to this video and of course subscribe. Catch you all on the next one.